So suppose we are looking at some function of three variables uh, that gives the temperature at some location in, in three space, right? Um, and suppose that you are moving along a curve and so it's parameterized by t and so it's got an x coordinate that depends on t and a y coordinate that depends on t and a z coordinate that depends on t so c is a function from the real line into r3 and we can depict it as being some curve, something that looks like this. Okay, and and so there's temperature. So there's uh, uh, some function f giving the temperature here as well. And so it might be that um, here. Let's let's get crazy with the highlighters. So we've got uh, so so maybe it's like real hot over here, kind of. And then it kind of cools down over here. So I'm trying to, I'm doing like color shading to indicate what the values of F are as, as you um, move around. And uh, maybe it's a little cooler out, out here and, and so on and so forth. Uh, <clears throat> maybe some more hot spots out here, etc. cetera. Um, anyways, so then you can ask, how does the temperature change um, as you are moving along this curve. So you're warming up and then cooling down and then warming up and so on and so forth. And then how does that happen as, uh, as time changes, right? So this is what uh, we want for, or this is, sorry, this is what we need the chain rule for. So um, chain rule tells you that if you're looking at uh, F as a function um, of a function of something else, what to do about this, right? So here, the situation is where our, our x coordinate is coming from the curve and our y coordinate is coming from the curve and our z coordinate is coming from the curve, right? <coughs> okay, so for, um, for one dimension, so like from your previous calculus class, you have a function f from r to R, and um, if you want to look at the time rate of change of f of, and it's just got a single variable x of t, uh, then this is going to be f prime x of t times x prime of t, or you might write this as uh, df dx dx dt. So that's the standard and hopefully familiar chain rule from single variable calculus. So for higher dimension, f now is a function from r3 into r. And now when we look at the time rate of change of f as we move along this curve, well, we need to take into account um, the rate at which f changes when we move in the x direction times the rate that we're moving in the x direction. And we also need to take into account the rate at which f is changing uh, when we move, when we change the y coordinate times the rate at which the y coordinate is changing. And we also need to take into account the rate of change of f as the z coordinate changes times the rate at which the z coordinate is changing. And then we add all of these up to get the total amount. Um, now, if you take a look at this, you'll, you might notice that what we've got here is we've got a product, a product, and a product all added up together. And then that might strike you as being familiar as a dot product. So. On the one hand, we have this vector of the first partial derivatives of x. Those are the things that are that are coming in as the first coordinates all the way along here. 
Um, and then this is getting dot producted with dx dt dy dt dz dt. And so those are the, uh, the second coordinates that we had coming along here. And so it turns out that if you, um, if we just go back up and look at our formula for um, the curve, dc dt or c prime of t, whichever one you want to call it, is just the thing that you get by differentiating each coordinate. Um, oh, I should have written it in, in Leibniz notation. So um, dx dt dy dt dz dt. Okay, now it matches what I've got down below. So this one here is c prime of t. And then it turns out that there's also a name uh, for this one here. And we'll talk a bunch about this one in the next section. It's called the gradient of f. And so the chain rule takes this form in the present situation. Okay, so now don't worry about the gradient for now. We'll come back and talk about it in section 15.6. Uh, I just wanted to show you that this, this, uh, the chain rule has the form of um, a dot product because that'll be important later on. Now, this uh, clip is about, I, I called it chain rule on a curve. And what I mean by that is just that our uh, location um, is given by this parametrized path. So in particular, x and y and z are functions of a single variable. In the next clip, we'll look at how to do the chain rule when your x and y and z are functions of two variables.